So one of the first questions I want to ask you around the keto diet is that I know some people sometimes don't feel well on it and that there is something that we have come to know as the keto flu that is responsible for some of those symptoms. Yes. Can you talk to us about that? Yes, I guess the keto flu is probably the number one complaint that a lot of people will have when they start on a ketogenic diet. And it does have a bit of history. So if we go back to the 70s and 80s when the Atkins diet was quite popular, it used to be called the Atkins flu. The difference, I guess, between the Atkins flu and the keto flu is simply now that we know what actually causes it. And it's actually due to something we call sodium deficiency. So sodium is actually one part of what we call table salt. So table salt is made of a sodium molecule and a chloride molecule. Mm -hmm. And the sodium is actually what we need in our body to hold fluid inside our blood vessels. So what a lot of people don't realise is that without sodium, you can drink all the water you want, but your body just can't hold on to it. And that means that if you lower your sodium levels, your blood vessel actually reduces, and then we get symptoms that a lot of people experience. So dizziness is the most common one. So, you know, when you stand up quickly and you feel a bit lightheaded. Mm -hmm. Really common when people first start a ketogenic diet. People might complain of muscle cramps, which is often caused by low sodium levels. And dryness of the eyes, it's one that I've actually had several patients who have been to see eye doctors because they're getting eye irritation. And funnily enough, when we just increase the amount of sodium or salt in their diet, the symptoms totally disappear. And Wow, that's, I find that fascinating. So what, what about um, blood pressure, though? Is that something that people need to worry about? Well, by replacing salt? Well, not really, not at all, because... The blood pressure itself is only a problem with salt if you also have high insulin levels. And it's actually the insulin levels that actually drive how much sodium your bodies are holding on to. And the way it works is that when you reduce the carbohydrates in your diet, your insulin level also falls. And there's pathways in the kidney where the kidney normally retains sodium um, and they're stimulated by insulin. So when your insulin levels fall, you suddenly start passing all of this extra sodium out in your urine. So that means that if your insulin level's low, healthy low, then you can be adding all of this extra salt in, and it really doesn't impact on the blood pressure much at all. In actual fact, if you read the renal medical journals, the renal physicians will describe what's termed essential hypertension, which is the garden variety of blood pressure, as an insulin-dependent condition. So that means for you to have this high blood pressure, it is actually required that you have high levels of insulin. And that's simply not a problem on a ketogenic diet for most people because we know the ketogenic diet actually leads to a reduction in your level of insulin. And I guess the other contributor, as well as uh, the increased losses in the urine, is what you actually find is that when you cut out processed foods of a healthy diet, you don't get as much salt in. Salt is absolutely hidden in everything. And if you go into a fresh food diet where you're going to the, uh, the fruit and veg section or the deli or the meat section, and that's the bulk of your diet, there's very, very little sodium in that part of the diet. Mm -hmm. So not only one, do you lose more sodium in the urine, but you're also putting less sodium in in the first place. And that is the underlying cause of the keto flu or Atkins flu, and the simple solution is to supplement with more salt. Fantastic, wonderful tips, thank you so much. Very welcome, thank you.